Today, OpenAI just announced its first agent, known as Operator, which allows it to use a browser to perform tasks for you. So let's take a look at Sam Altman introduce the Operator. Good morning. We've got something exciting for you today. We're going to launch our first agent. AI agents are AI systems that can do work for you independently. You give them a task, and they go off and do it. Uh, we think this is going to be a big trend in AI, really impact the work people can do, how productive they can be, how creative they can be, what they can accomplish. We're starting today with Operator. Operator is a system that can use a web browser, uh, in this case a web browser in the cloud, to accomplish tasks that you give it. And we'll show you a demo in just a second, but it's really quite, quite cool what it can do. Um, just like you would use a web browser, you can get pixels in, you can look at a screen, control, and Operator can do that, and then control the keyboard and the mouse and do all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. This is going to go live today in the United States for pro users, and it'll be other countries soon. Europe will, unfortunately, take a while. Uh, and we'll also, in the coming months, make it available to Plus users. I want to mention that the Operator is only available for GPT pro users, right? And the pro users typically pay about $200 a month. Um, this is an early research preview. We've got a lot of improvements to do. We'll make it better. We'll make it cheaper. We'll make it more widely available. But we really want to put it in people's hands. We'll also have more agents to launch uh, in the coming weeks and months. But uh, that said, we'll talk more later. So excited. Just want to show you a demo. Yeah. Right over to Yash. Right. Thanks, Sam. Hi, I'm Yash. This is KSC. That's Roy. And we work on the computer using agent team. And we're so excited to show you Operator today. As Sam said, Operator is an early research preview. It will do a lot of cool things. It also makes mistakes, sometimes embarrassing ones. But let's let's show you what Operator can do. OK, so this is the Operator homepage. It lives at operator.chatgpt.com. It will be accessible as soon as the live stream is over. Um, and as you can see, the interface is very similar to ChatGPT. You can type in a prompt, and the Operator will try to execute the task to the best of its capability. We'll also see we have a list of pre-filled prompts here. These are not really meant to be recommendations. These are meant to be things that you know, to give you an idea of what Operator can do, they've also collaborated with various brands like OpenTable, All Recipes, StubHub, Uber, Thumbtack, DoorDash, eBay, Target, to make sure Operator really works well on these websites. But also, we think users will find Operator valu very valuable in interacting with these platforms. So think of Operator as your own personal assistant. If you want to book a restaurant, it's going to do that for you. If you want to book a hotel, it can actually do that for you. Basically, takes over the functions or the operations of the browser. The only interactions you'll need to provide the operator is when it needs to fill in your billing information or your credit card information. So this is pretty exciting because now you can have your own personal assistant at the cost of about two hundred dollars a month. So with that, let's jump into the demo. Okay, so I'm going to start with something fairly simple. I'm going to use Open Table and say. Book me the table for two at Beretta tonight at 7 p.m. Okay, and so you specifically chose Open Table. Yeah, in this case, I'm asking operator to use Open Table to book a table for two at Beretta. Beretta is a restaurant in San Francisco. It's great. You should try it out. Uh, and at 7 p.m. And I could, I'm, I'm using Open Table in this case, but I could have easily said just do Beretta and it would have probably gone to okay. the search engine, figured out how to make a reservation as well, but let's see what it does. So can you explain what's happening in this? Like, yeah, great. So I'm going to expand this a little bit. So as soon as I type in the query, operator instantiated a completely remote browser. This browser is running in the cloud somewhere. Wow. And as you can see, it's already up and running. And my hands are off the keyboard. I'm not typing these things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is just the AI is clicking around. AI is just clicking around. And, and this is this is actually groundbreaking because now think of it as the AI or the agent is contextually aware. It's it knows your browser. It's able to look around, click on dates, click on quantities, and be able to interact with a browser to the remote web server on the other side. This is pretty impressive. It started this browser session. It knew where OpenTable website is, which is opentable.com. As you can see, it's summarized chain of thought here as well, which is mm -hmm. it's gone to the URL, search for Beretta. And something cool really happened, which is, and for some reason, operator uh, OpenTable thought we were in Virginia, and it auto-corrected itself to San Francisco. Wow. This is using, the, like ChatGPT, in operator, you can also give custom instructions. I'm going to show this really quickly here. Let's do Okay. So I've given a custom instruction that for okay. queries that need it, I live in San Francisco. So operator recognized that, and then... 
You know, I was concerned that operator had access to your GPS, but it looks like you can provide it with custom instructions such as where you live and your zip code, which is pretty nice, which means you have custom instructions for your operator to use. And part of production itself, we go to send to go to Verena. Okay, it looks like 7 p.m. isn't available, but you know what? 7.45 is just fine, so we're going to go do that. So in this case, operator came back, and this is a really good example of task delegation where operator needs help or needs assistance or just wants to ask you something. It'll just come back and you mm -hmm. Sorry, guys, you wouldn't have had to watch this. You could have just let it go off while you're doing other things, then it would come back and say, hey, I can't do 7, 7.25. Totally. Yeah. And we're starting with a web app. Okay. So that's pretty nice that the agent can essentially interact with the browser without you being present which is why I said that it's basically your personal assistant for 200 bucks a month. Get notifications, it's like when uh, operator moves into mobile, you'll get mobile notifications, much like interactions we do with general apps. Okay, yes, that's great, let's do it. Okay, so again, okay, very, uh, very simple interaction as you would have with an assistant, which is, hey, I found reservation, 7 p.m. wasn't available, let's do 7.45. Wow. Again, you can see, um, operator at this point has said, okay, should I, Again, this is a really good example of the confirmations work we're going to talk about a little bit later, but you know, before doing an action, which is sort of irreversible in this case, we can cancel the revision, obviously, but again, taking a critical action, operator is asking us before actually doing it. And in this case, I'm going to say, let's do it. So it looks like it does wait for some confirmations, uh, things like purchasing, but everything before that was done by the operator. Okay, it was pretty quick, I would say, like, you know, 50 seconds. And again, we were watching in this case, etc. Like, but as Sam said, it off, take it out. Yeah, I'm gone. Okay, so let's try something. Oh, unfortunately, that table is no longer available. So it's going to probably go and find alternate time slots. Oh, that's good. So it looks like someone else booked that same restaurant time as we were watching this. That's cool, like, that's never happened before. <laughs> uh, look, yeah, that's great. That's very trippy. Okay, right, while it's doing that, how about we try something a little bit more complicated? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love groceries. So I've been using operator to shop all my groceries. I love to cook quite a bit. And I have been using operator exclusively for groceries. So let's, I have a shopping list here, which is this one. Oh. Let's see what it is. Eggs, spinach, mushroom, chicken thighs, chili plant. So you know what I thought? I'm just wondering if the next iteration when operator comes to mobile, you'll be able to take your smartphone take a picture of your fridge with the ingredients and say, you know, purchase these for me. So is it going to visually understand that context and, and be able to do shopping for you just by clicking on it? That's pretty impressive. There's a picture of my That's exactly right. And I'm going to use Instacart, which is again what we use generally. Can you buy this for me, please? And I'll also specify the store I like, which is well, let's see if he figures out that I missed that. <laughs> let's see. Uh, okay, so in this case, again, operator quickly actually recognized using GPT-4 vision capabilities to understand that the image said X. So it does use GPT-4 vision capabilities, and uh, it does go ahead and interact and, and choose the web browser as as well as the website to purchase from. Nice mushroom chicken thighs, and it actually knew this is market. And I'm like, yes, that sounds great. Wow, this is pretty nuts. I mean, this is impressive. Cool. Again, just like OpenTable, it instantiated a browser, and it's going to go ahead and start doing this. I'm going to expand the view, and let's see what it does. So in all these cases, you've said what you wanted to use. If you just say, buy me these groceries and don't specify Instacart, what happens? It will do a search, use a search engine, much like we do, and it will find you know, Instacart or Gus's directly website or whatever else is on the search engine go through that, ask you questions if it needs clarifications, and go from there. I'm curious what's happening here, though. So you can you see it's... Tell us a little bit about it? So now that you've seen a bit of Operator, let me talk a little about the research behind it. So Operator is based on the new model we've trained at OpenAI, which we're calling the Computer Using Agent, or KUA for short. So KUA is a model built off of GPT-40, but it's also trained to use and control a computer in the same way that humans can, by you know, just looking at the screen and using a mouse and keyboard to control it. Before, if you wanted to build something like Operator without, uh, without Kua, you need to use some specialized APIs. For example, if you wanted your model to buy stuff from Instacart, you'd need to figure out if Instacart had uh, an API, you'd need to figure out if that API had all the functions that it needed. 
and you need to give you know your model the specs to that API. Mm-hmm. But you know, if your site, like most other websites, did not have an API, then you're out of luck. This is just using screenshots, no API, nothing, just no running. API, yes. Um, and that's where Kuba comes in. Um, by teaching a model how to use the same basic interface that we use on a daily basis, it just you know unlocks a whole new range of uh, software that can use that was previously inaccessible. So wow. Like keyboard and mouse, right? It's kind of using keyboard and mouse. So are we saying that now people will be able to create their own agents and just deploy that to the you know App Store or the OpenAI Store and just download the agent and have it do stuff for you? It's pretty interesting. Exactly. Yes. Um, and that's really what the Cool Research Project is about. It's about removing one more bottleneck in our path towards AGI and uh, letting our agents move around and act in the digital world. So let's make that a little bit more concrete by looking at this task and seeing exactly how operator is using a computer. So wow. it looks like it's already done, but let's go back a little bit to the top here. Okay, so uh, it shows a random spot. The first thing that Kua does when it controls the computer is it looks at the screenshot. So now you're seeing the maybe the search results page for eggs in Instacart. Hmm. So Kua understands this. It's just seeing the raw pixels. And after Kua sees this image, it decides what to do next. So right now it's making some inner monologues, and this is the summarized chain of thought. So what Kua is doing is, according to it, you know, it's selecting organic eggs and adding it to the cart, which is a reasonable thing to do. Um, so after it does this plan, it then figures out what the next action it should take is. So let's see what it does in the next step. OK, so you see that it performed a click on this Add button right here. Wow, OK. That's very reasonable. Now, every time Kua does an action, it takes the next screenshot of the computer so that it knows you know, what effect its action had on the, on the computer. So let's see what happens next. Yes, okay, so, so after clicking on the Add button, now you see it in the cart. And this just kind of keeps continuing. Um, let's see what it does next. OK, so it creates the next subplan, which is adding eggs and uh, searching for spinach. So probably going to search for spinach now. OK, so it clicks on the search bar right there. It types in spinach. So I guess he's walking through the iterations that the agent, uh, the operator took in order to add these items to the cart, visually, the mouse clicks, and the interactions with the web browser. So this loop of taking actions, grabbing screenshots, and creating these subplans, it just keeps going on until the operator decides that it's done with the task, and then it goes back to you. It's very cool to see a thought process going like that. Though. It is, yeah. Um, so let's actually go back to live, and yeah, operator is done. Yash, you want to see if operator did your job yeah, right now? Let's see. Uh, you know what? I want a little bit more eggs. <laughs> <laughs> I think we eat a lot of eggs. Um, OK, so what I can do at this point, and I'm going to just click this button called Take Control. So this remote, as we were talking about, like operator fires up this remote browser to do it. We almost think of it as a surface area where operator can work, and then I can work. For example, in this case, I took over control from operator, which is also key to sort of how okay. think about user and user controls. Like at any point in time, a user can be should be able to take control and give operator instructions or tell a little bit more, guide a little bit more, etc. Et and like passing the laptop back and forth, just like you did with Ray. Totally, totally, exactly right. It's just like you know, in this case, I'm gonna make those two, and then I'm just you know, tell operator. This is again like very much like if you and I were working, like hey, mm-hmm. I did this, okay, can you fix this, <laughs> and I'm gonna tell operator. I, so this reminds me of remote desktop. So where you're working with IT and someone takes over your computer to check if there's a technical issue and you can interact remotely back and forth. And now we're gonna, he's gonna enter what changed in that interaction and then hand the control back to the operator. And another egg, good to place order now. Can operators see what you're doing during takeover mode? Great point. So when you take over, it's very much just like a session with your local browser. It's completely private. Operator cannot see. And this is one of the part of the reasons why I have to tell operator. Or you don't really have to. It can look at the last screenshot and try to guess mm-hmm. it. But it's really good. It's sort of like if you and I were working together, I went off and did something, and I come back and like, Ray, I completely messed it up. Can you fix this? <laughs> can I have to tell you that? <laughs> so um, in this case, I'm going to tell operator. Uh, and go ahead. And I'm, now I'm passing back the control to mm-hmm. operator. It's a completely private session when you take our control. This is the, also the, you'll notice that I'm locked into Instacart here. Mm-hmm. I did it before the demo, uh, and or wow. I've been logged in for a while now. And it's again very much like your local browser when you log into this. So it does look like there is a lot that this can do. Um, let's go ahead and check the payment processing. Can I do a few more things? 
Let's, yeah. Mm-hmm. What, do you, what do you want to do? Because the Lakers are in town this weekend. Lakers are in town, definitely. Let's Can we all go see the yeah. game? Let's do it. All right. Okay, so we are going to use this stub hub. Um, so as you can see, you can do different operations, you know, book tickets. Now they're going to stop hub, but uh, let's jump over to the website for OpenAI. And you can see up top, it says introducing operator, a research preview of an agent that can use its own browser to perform tasks for you, available to pro users in the US. And if you go to the operator, click on go to the operator, it says you can try it with GPT Pro. Uh, I do have GPT Plus. Uh, for the pro, you need about $200 per month. So that is a cost to use the operator. Uh, going back, you can see that, you know, the agent, you know, in summary, will be able to go to the web, perform tasks for you using your own browser. You can look at a web page, interact with, with it by typing, clicking, and scrolling through the website. Uh, the operator can handle a wide variety of repetitive browser tasks, such as filing out forms, filling out forms, ordering groceries, and even creating memes. That's funny. Uh, the other thing, um, let's go down here, how the operator works. It's powered by a new model called Computer Using Agent, uh, CUA, which combines GPT-4O's vision uh, capabilities with advanced reasoning through reinforcement learning. Uh, CUA is trained to interact with graphical user uh, interfaces, GUIs, the buttons, menus, and text fields people see on a screen. Uh, so that's just how it works and how to use it. Uh, simply done, it's, it's like just, you know, uh, to get started, simply describe the task you need done and the operator handles the rest for you. And uh, so on and so forth. I'm going to leave the links to the operator. You can check them out in the video description. And that's pretty much uh, what was announced today. Uh, OpenAI just released the first agent uh, introducing the operator, which can use its own browser to perform tasks for you, available to pro users in the US. And uh, now one other thing you may wanna think about is safety. How does OpenAI ensure that it is safe to perform some operations, meaning that it can prevent you from doing something nefarious or performing disallowed tasks? Um, you can see that operator comes back and asks for confirmation when it's about to do anything kind of uh, impactful. Mm-hmm. And um, yes, yeah, so I think we're all very excited about this vision of operator doing your choice for you, but it is one of the first agents that we're putting out in the world and which has real world side effects. And so we thought carefully about how to deploy this safely. The framework we used to think about this was one centered around misalignment. So for example, what if the user is misaligned? So maybe they're asking for um, a harmful task, like buy a weapon or something like that. In that case, fortunately, we've done a lot of work with ChatGPT mm-hmm. to bring over a lot of the same mitigations. So, for example, we refuse harmful tasks, including harmful uh, agentic tasks. Um, we have moderation models. We have uh, post hoc detection. We have blocked uh, websites. And you know, I'm kind of rattling off these mitigations, but that's really how we think about it. It's this stack of mitigations that each incrementally reduce the risk to the point where we feel comfortable deploying. All the confirmations that we were saying, hey, do you want to reserve the restaurant? Yeah, exactly. buy the tickets. Those are all examples of this. So the human agent interaction has some um, mitigations to prevent uh, disallowed tasks or domain block list. If you want to go to other nefarious websites or the dark web, it's going to prevent that. Uh, you know, it can refuse to perform high stakes tasks. Um, I'm not sure if gambling falls into this domain, but uh, we have to see. And it also prevents, performs, you know, cautious mode of behavior. So it, it, that's another mitigation um, to ensure that the the operator or the agent doesn't soothe some doesn't do something which is not ethical or something which is against the law. So this is all about AI safety or operator safety risks and mitigations. And uh, pretty much that sums up uh, today's announcement of the operator and agents from OpenAI. Till next time, stay positive. Peace.